This is President Joe Biden. On April 14th, 2021, Biden announced the removal of all U.S. troops from Afghanistan by September 11th, 2021. The United States will begin our final withdrawal, begin it on May 1 of this year. We'll not conduct a hasty rush to the exit. We'll do it, we'll do it responsibly, deliberately and safely. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen. In just four short months, President Biden, the commander in chief of the United States, would be presiding over a massive military blunder that shocked the world. So how did we get here? Well, let's take a look back at one of the biggest foreign policy catastrophes in US history. Thanks, Joe Biden. Back in December 2019, which seems like a decade ago, Biden participated in the sixth Democratic presidential debate and said how he would approach the situation in Afghanistan. The first thing I would do as president of the United States of America is to make sure that we brought all combat troops home, entered into a negotiation with the Taliban, but I would leave behind special forces in small numbers to be able to deal with the potential threat unless we got a real good negotiation accomplished to deal with terrorism. And as it turns out, that's what President Trump did. In 2019, the Trump administration set out to start negotiations that involved both the Taliban and the Afghan government. But at the same time, the Taliban refused to meet with the Afghan government and vice versa. The agreement with the Taliban was conditions-based, including the promise to start intra-Afghan negotiations with the Afghan government and not allowing any of its members, other individuals or groups, including Al-Qaeda, to use the soil of Afghanistan to threaten the security of the United States and its allies. And the United States, over the next 14 months, would begin drawing down its troop levels from 15 and a half thousand and withdraw all of their forces from their remaining bases, completely leaving Afghanistan by May 1st, 2021. It was also negotiated that the United States and its allies will refrain from the threat or the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Afghanistan or intervening in its domestic affairs. In other words, the U.S. would get out of the way of intra-Afghan dialogue and negotiations and not intervene in its internal affairs. And for its part, the Taliban didn't attack U.S. soldiers after the peace agreement, and they also entered into peace negotiations with the Afghan government in 2020, because they knew that if they violated the deal, that there would be consequences under President Trump. But then there was a change in management. On May 25th, 2021, President Biden declared that the May 1st deadline to get out of Afghanistan would be hard to meet, citing unnamed tactical reasons. And earlier in the month, in an interview with former Clinton operative George Stephanopoulos, Biden was asked about the withdrawal. President Trump uh, reached a deal with the Taliban to have all American troops leave by May 1st. Are they going to leave? I'm in the process of making that decision now as to when they'll leave. The fact is that um, that was not a very solidly negotiated deal that uh, the president, the former president, uh, worked out. And of course, that's easy for him to say, especially since he doesn't have to describe in any detail what was wrong with Trump's deal or what Biden would have done differently. And so we're in consultation with our allies as well as the government. And uh, uh, that decision's gonna be, it's in process now. Likely to take longer? I, I don't think a lot longer. But May 1st is tough. Why was it tough? Because Trump, of course. The failure to have an orderly transition from the Trump presidency to my presidency, which usually takes place from election day to the time you're sworn in, has cost me time and consequences. For example, we didn't realize how bad things were in terms of lack of vaccines. We were not able to get access to this information. That's part of, that's one of the issues we're talking about now. Okay, first off, the Biden administration's claim that Trump didn't order enough vaccines was proven to be complete BS. Even PolitiFact called him out on it. 
Anyway, you may have noticed that Biden didn't actually say why we might need more time other than because Trump, which is always like the default reason. And that brings us to April 14th, 2021, when Biden addressed the nation on the withdrawal of US troops in Afghanistan. After consulting closely with our allies and partners, with our military leaders and intelligence personnel, with our diplomats and our development experts, with the Congress and the Vice President, as well as with Mr. Ghani and many others around the world, I've concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. Oh, he decided, <laughs> right. The reality is that it was decided already by the Trump administration because they were the ones that set that pesky May 1st deadline, the deadline that Biden ultimately decided to push back. So in keeping with that agreement, and with our national interest, the United States will begin our final withdrawal, begin it on May 1 of this year. Uh, yeah, that's when we were supposed to be out, but only if the Taliban were meeting the conditions of the peace agreement, which surprise, surprise, they weren't. According to a United Nations report, since mid-April, not coincidentally after Biden's speech, the Taliban launched more than 5,500 attacks in 31 of 34 provinces. And 20 groups, including Al-Qaeda and ISIS, were fighting alongside the Taliban against the Afghan population and security forces. And even with these attacks by the Taliban and their associates, and even with reports that US intelligence was predicting that the Taliban would eventually, if not imminently, take over the country, President Biden was adamant that it wasn't going to happen. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Why? Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Now, when I first saw this, I thought that maybe Joe Biden was trying to downplay the situation. Think about it. If Biden said, yeah, of course the Taliban are likely to take over the country, it would have instantly delegitimized the Afghan security forces and the government. Mr. President, thank you very much. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. Is it, can you please clarify what they have told you about whether that will happen or not? That is not true. They did not, they didn't, did not reach that conclusion except that they did reach that conclusion. Back in June, the Wall Street Journal reported that US intelligence agencies were saying that it could happen as soon as six months after the withdrawal of the US military. Why, you ask? Well, remember the thousands of attacks by the Taliban that started in mid-April? Well, as it turns out, those well-equipped Afghan security forces frequently surrendered without a fight leaving their Humvees and other American supplied equipment to the Taliban. And despite that, Biden was insistent that the Taliban was no match for the Afghan forces. But the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. It's highly unlikely, guys. You can trust Joe Biden. He's a foreign policy expert. Just ask President Obama's Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates. I was rereading your memoir before we sat down to talk. And you said in your memoir, I think he's been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. Would he be an effective commander in chief? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I stand by that statement. Sure, Joe Biden is clueless and incompetent when it comes to foreign policy and national security, but hey, at least the mean tweets stopped. And one of the biggest examples of incompetence in the Biden administration is the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. On June 7th, he testified before the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. Uh, whatever happens in Afghanistan, if there is a significant deterioration uh, in security, um, that could well happen. We've discussed this uh, before. Um, I don't think it's going to be something that happens from a Friday to a Monday. On Friday, August 13th, the Taliban had overrun Kandahar and Herat, the second and third largest cities in Afghanistan. 
and by Sunday, they entered Kabul and simply walked into the presidential palace. In the meantime, the U.S. was scrambling to evacuate staff and top officials from the U.S. Embassy. But don't worry, Secretary Blinken said it was orderly. Which is weird, because in that now infamous July press conference, resident Biden assured Americans that there was no way that that was going to happen. Do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... What None whatsoever. Were... Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through the gates of our embassy. Six, if I'm not mistaken. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comparable. Except that's exactly how it happened. Womp womp. So while the country of Afghanistan was collapsing, Biden was literally and figuratively on vacation at Camp David. And after days of criticism by both parties and the media, Biden finally returned to the White House that Monday for a 3.45 p.m. address. My national security team and I have been closely monitoring the situation on the ground in Afghanistan and moving quickly to execute the plans we had put in place to respond to every constituency, including and contingency, including the rapid collapse we're seeing now. Not even 30 seconds into what could be the most important speech of his presidency, and he confuses the word contingency with constituency. 81 million votes, guys. And instead of owning up to one of the biggest foreign policy blunders in US history, Commander-in-Chief Joe Biden blamed Orange Man Bad. I inherited a deal that President Trump negotiated with the Taliban. Under his agreement, U.S. forces would be out of Afghanistan by May 1, 2021, just a little over three months after I took office. And by moving the deadline to September 11, Biden broke the agreement. The choice I had to make as your president was either to follow through on that agreement, which he didn't, or be prepared to go back to fighting the Taliban in the middle of the spring fighting season. See what he's doing here? It's called misdirection. The issue at hand is how badly he was bungling the U.S. withdrawal, but instead he's making the case for why we were leaving in the first place. We were clear-eyed about the risk. We planned for every contingency, but I always promised the American people that I would be straight with you. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So they planned for every contingency, but at the same time, they weren't prepared for this contingency. Got it. So with at least 10,000 Americans behind enemy lines in Kabul and the Taliban surrounding the airport, which just happened to be the only location in the entire country you could escape on a military flight, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said one of the most stunning things you will ever hear from a military leader. We have the capability to go out and collect Americans. We don't have the capability to go out and collect up large uh, numbers of, of, uh, of people. So the defense secretary, who is the second in command of the U.S. Armed Forces, just said that the military doesn't have the capability to go beyond the perimeter of the airport so they can rescue American civilians. That is completely unacceptable! In the meantime, the British and French weren't making excuses and were sending in special forces to rescue their citizens. Uh, we will continue to uh, deconflict uh, issues with, uh, with the Taliban and we will stay focused on securing uh, the, uh, the airfield. We cannot afford to either not defend that airfield or, or, or not have an airfield that's secure where we have hundreds or thousands of civilians uh, that can access uh, uh, the airfield at will and put our forces at risk. But that doesn't answer the question. I mean, you're still saying you're focused on the airfield. They, these people can't get into the airfield. Well, we're going to do everything we can to uh, continue to try to uh, deconflict uh, and and create. Uh... This is absolutely pathetic. Our military are run by a bunch of morons. So the head moron, Joke Biden, decided that it would be a good idea to address the nation again 
but not about Afghanistan. I'd like to make an important announcement. Oh, please say you're resigning. I just got a lengthy briefing from my COVID team. What? And here's the latest, the latest data that confirms that we're still in a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Tens of thousands of Americans are being hung out to dry in Afghanistan. But let's talk about booster shots that aren't even available yet. I wonder who thought it was a good idea to hold a press conference about COVID in the middle of an international military crisis. We did a joke. <laughs> hey, everyone. Vogue. Well, that would explain things. But as it turns out, he couldn't actually talk about Afghanistan before his very special interview with George Stephanopoulos because then it wouldn't have been as exclusive and special. We've seen those hundreds of people packed into a C-17. We've seen Afghans falling. That was four days ago, five days ago. It happened days ago, George. Why are you bringing that up? Come on, man. When you look at what's happened over the last week, was it a failure of intelligence, planning, execution, or judgment? All of the above, George. Look, I don't think it was a failure. Look, it was a simple choice, George. Denial ain't just a river in Egypt. When you had the government of Afghanistan, because look, George, there is no good time to leave Afghanistan. <laughs> Holy You don't think this could have been handled? This actually could have been handled better in any way? No mistakes? No, I, I, I don't think it could have been handled in a way that there, we, we're going to go back in hindsight and look, but the idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that happened. Okay, wow. First of all, if Biden had stuck by the May 1st deadline, he could have easily pulled Americans out of Kabul safely because it's almost certain that the Taliban would not have been in control of the city like it is now. Second, maybe Biden shouldn't have shut down Bagram Airfield, the largest US military base in the country, and instead used it to fly our people out. Instead, on July 6th, we literally left in the middle of the night and shut the electricity off, and reportedly didn't even bother to tell the base's new Afghan commander. So at the very least, yes, the withdrawal could have been a little less chaotic. Then Stephanopoulos asked Biden why he ignored the advice of his advisors to keep 2,500 troops in Afghanistan. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. No, they didn't. It was split. That, that, that wasn't true. That wasn't true. So no one, no one told, your military advisors did not tell you, no, we should just keep 2,500 troops. It's been a stable situation for the last several years. We can do that. We can continue to do that. No, no one said that to me that I can recall. So Biden gave three different answers. No, he wasn't told that. His advisors were split on the issue and he can't recall. Except that this was widely reported on back in April. Everyone from General Mark Milley to Defense Secretary Austin to the commander of our Middle East forces, General McKenzie, all advised against pulling those last 2,500 troops out of the country. Biden rejected that advice. And on April 15th, this was confirmed by Biden's press secretary, Jen Psaki. The uh, evaluation and the decision made by the president was that uh, based on the recommendations, the advice from national security advisors, from his, uh, his team across the administration, is that the threat against the homeland now emanating from Afghanistan can be, uh, uh, from Afghanistan, to, can be kept to a level that can be addressed without per that persistent footprint. So Orange Woman Bad confirmed that Biden ignored advice from his advisors. But now he claims that he doesn't recall what was actually happening. I don't trust a damn word that comes out of this guy's mouth because he's gonna keep changing his story to fit his own narrative. And that is dangerous. And with that, thanks for watching, sharing, and slamming that like button. Be sure to check out these videos that you may have missed and be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. As always, I hope to see you next time. If there is next time. <laughs>